Highlights of the annual Toyota Atlantis 4x4 Fun Day is proudly brought to you by Toyota South Africa. More than 100 4x4 off-roaders of all makes, shapes and sizes. More than 100 different families and friends all sharing one passion. Acres and acres of beautiful white sand dunes and no less than 8 different obstacles designed to test both the skills of the competitors and their vehicles but to also provide all participants with a good laugh along the way. Welcome to the 2018 Toyota Atlantis 4x4 Fun Day. It was a Saturday morning early in October and up on the western coast of Cape Town, not even 50 kilometers north of the mother city. The location, the beautiful white sand dunes of Atlantis, the water catchment area that is also protected by the city of Cape Town, not far from the town with the same name. The occasion, it was time for the annual Atlantis 4x4 Fun Day, presented once again by the Western Cape Division of the Four-Wheel Drive Club of Southern Africa, and sponsored once again by South Africa's leading motor manufacturer and by far the market leader, especially when it comes to sales of 4x4 and off-road capable buckies and SUVs. Here is Toyota South Africa's Senior Manager of Communications, Clinton Yon. We're at the 2018 Toyota Atlantis 4x4 Fun Day. Believe it or not, we are actually into our 13th year and Toyota's been involved in every single one of them. It's because we have a connection with the people who buy our cars. So it makes sense for a company such as Toyota to support an event that reflects their brand values. But Jan was also quick to point out that the event and its entry list is very representative of what is happening in the marketplace. I think it's important to remember that Toyota sells on average about 3,500 Hiluxes a month. We sell over 1,000 Fortuners a month. We sell 250 Land Cruisers every single month. And a lot of the people that are here are our customers. Bearing in mind that 50% of the um, competitors this, this year are our Toyotas. So the Atlantis 4x4 Fun Day provides Toyota with an opportunity to not only showcase some of their products, but to also connect with some of their existing as well as prospective customers. But this is only possible thanks to the passion and great organizing skills displayed by the Four-Wheel Drive Club of Southern Africa's Western Cape Division. Yes, we are um, a family-orientated club, um, mainly in, in the Western Cape. Um, this is the 13th year that we host this event here at Atlantis Dunes. Um, and we try to make it fun for our whole family, not just a competition but everyone needs to enjoy it, father, son, daughters, everyone. More than 100 off-road vehicles from all or most makes were lined up as their occupants were readying themselves for a fun, yet challenging and tough day that lay ahead. But exactly what is the Atlantis 4x4 fun day and how difficult is it really? Well, let's try and summarize. The overall course consists of eight very different obstacles. Each or most of the obstacles were run as time trials. In other words, the stopwatch was running to record the time it takes each vehicle and its occupants to complete the specific obstacle. But at the same time, the objective was not always to go as fast as possible. And it wasn't always just about the car's off-road abilities and the driver's skills as each obstacle also included an additional challenge of some sort for either the co-driver, the driver or sometimes both. So perhaps it's better to refer to the eight different challenges as tasks rather than obstacles. Either way, the same set of rules apply to all or most of the tasks and the same could be said for the principles of 4x4 or off-road driving. As slow as possible, but at the same time as fast as necessary. But the dunes at Atlantis are made up of, well, you guessed it, sand. And sand presents its very own set of rules. Firstly, it's all about the amount of rubber between the car and the sand. Bigger tires are better, and more importantly, they need to be inflated, or is that rather deflated, to the right pressures. Too hard and they simply won't work in a thick sand, but too soft and they can jump off the rim when both power and steering is applied at the same time. Again. With all the preparations, driver's briefing and other formalities done and dusted, it was time for the 100 cars and their crews to head out to the respective obstacles and challenges. 
The area is fairly contained with the tasks in relative close proximity to each other and the 9.30 start time meant it was still relatively cool in the Cape. But the day and the action was about to heat up. So off to task one, the aptly named Dune Charge, positioned at the big dune near the southern border of the Atlantis Dune area. This specific task was proudly sponsored by the Burnco Friday RV Club. And here's the lowdown from the man who held the stopwatch at task one. Uh, the object of this exercise is a, it's a memory test, first of all, and then the second one is to get up this hill and then reversing back and then getting out of the car and going and memorizing or giving us answers as to what you saw in each box. So we already know that bigger wheels that are deflated to the correct pressures are your friends when it comes to sand and dune driving. But they are not the only ones on your side, especially when it comes to driving uphill, like up the big dune here at the Dune Charge. The more power you can get onto the sand via big wheels, the better the result, normally that is. There was one more factor to consider. The sand was still relatively wet and compact earlier in the day, making it easy even for big and heavy four-wheel drive cars to stay on top of the surface. But as the sun came out, the mercury raised considerably here in Atlantis, baking the moisture out of the sand. And loose and hot sand is a completely different animal than when the dune is somewhat wet and compact. Add to this the fact that tens of equally eager teams and powerful four-wheel drives have already churned up the track. All the obstacles became more and more of a challenge as the day progressed. Well, it's my eighth year I'm doing it now, Redian. It's a family day, and most important, I'm doing it with my youngster. So that's what it's all about. Not far from the dune charge, another group was already sinking their teeth into different parts of the same big dune. This one was called Get Knotted. This is obstacle two, and they have to pleat a, a rope while they're doing the course, and then the stride, it's a, it's a time limit, two and a half minutes, and um, they must try and get as many pleats in, the, in their time. This task, sponsored by Imperial Toyota Cape Gate, was a little more tricky, as the course wound its way up and down the same dune. Competitors had to wait for the signal of the marshal to start, complete the technical course as indicated by the red and green markers, and stop at the finish gate. But as the marshal explained, wives, girlfriends, but in most cases friends and grown men, had to put their pleating skills to the test while shaking about and around inside a fast-moving four-wheel drive vehicle. The ever-present stopwatch was counting, but at the same time, the amount of knots on the rope was also to be counted. The trick, therefore, was to go as fast as necessary, but slow enough to allow your partner to do the necessary. The average time it took most of the competitors who managed to get through the tricky obstacle was around a minute to a minute and a half, long enough to pleat around 27 or so knots. But there was this one pairing from Gauteng who took their pleating very seriously. Start up, start up. Yeah. Scar dry, scar dry, scar dry, scar dry, scar dry. Daar zijn. Yes! <laughs> well done. Daar zijn. That's a fun day. And we like to beat men. It's not normal for women to actually 4x4, so... Yeah. 28. Is that something you do every day while driving in a car? Uh, no, unfortunately not, but I do have four sisters, so that uh, gets me. So the Toyota Atlantis 4x4 Fun Day was now well underway, with more than 100 off-roaders filled with 4x4 enthusiasts spread out across the Atlantis conservation area. Join us after the break for more action from the dunes. Welcome back to the beautiful white sand dunes of Atlantis where the Toyota Atlantis 4x4 Fun Day 
was now in full swing. The mercury was climbing, which meant the sand got more and more loose, and completing an obstacle or task was becoming more and more of a challenge. So off to task three, Kitty and Klippikis was hosted by Barlow World Toyota Tiger Valley. And as the name suggested, it involved shooting, well, Kitties and Klippikis of some sorts. Okay, this is obstacle three. A uh, few things happen. Um, they have to go around over the hill, over the dunes, down. On top of the dunes, they've got to stop behind a certain mark, which the co-pilot has to get out. And then he has to take a, a, a catapult, take three shots at three beer cans. When they get to the beer cans, then they uh, get marked according to how many beer cans they mark. When they get to this marker where I'm appointed my job, then I meet with this <coughs> marker how far they actually stop. So the closer they stop, the higher marks they get. As with all or most of the obstacles, the stopwatch was ticking, while each and every off-roader and its driver negotiated the sharp corners, up and down hills and loose sand while trying to stay within the boundaries. Each navigator got three shots at the target no more than five meters away, and a hit with the little catapult would earn you a full 20 points each. But we have to say that most of the shooting skills displayed were not quite up to scratch, with very few crews getting the extra points. The obstacle did, however, provide another chance to score some points. Stopping less than 10 centimeters from the stake would earn you an additional 60 points. Less than 20 centimeters was worth 40 points. And if you didn't know where the first 30 centimeters in front of your car's bumper was, you would still be awarded 20 points. No, very nice, quite challenging, quite tight. So for the bigger cars, I think it's a bit difficult. Okay guys, this is obstacle number four. You have to go around that island, then you have to go and park in that box. The co-driver get out of the car and need to throw three hoops over that pole. Back in the car, seat belts on, reverse around the island, back into the next box, all two axles in the box, get out of the box around that corner and finish at the, at the finish stop. One axle in the box, time stops. As the day progressed, it was very clear that 4x4ing is serious business for some. But as the name of the event suggests, the day was all about fun for not only the driver, but the whole family. Driving skills and an off-roader's capabilities were no doubt rewarded, but the emphasis was also on having fun. Task 4, sponsored by Maniac 4x4, was another case in point, where good and fast driving were both rewarded with good points. But a simple thing as throwing a hoop over a pole was just as important. With exactly half of the field all sitting behind the wheels of Fortuners, Hiluxes, FJ Cruisers and other Land Cruisers, overall event sponsors Toyota had every reason to be happy with the proceeding. Beside having a long and successful history as far as building and selling reliable and capable off-road vehicles is concerned, Toyota also has a long and successful history of being involved with events such as this one. On top of the annual Atlantis 4x4 Fun Day, the country's largest manufacturer has also been the main sponsor of the Rista Winter 4x4 Jamboree for more than three decades. The Jamboree takes place in April each year at the well-known campsite and Gymkhana area of the 4x4 ATV Club of South Africa. And although there are many similarities between the two events, the two are also vastly different. Here's Rist the Winter organizer and Toyota's guest here in Atlantis, Dirk van Wijk, to explain. I really like the place. I'm impressed with the amount of sand that we've got here and the white sand and the cleanliness of the sand. It's totally different to the environment that we used to drive in. We, we've got rocks and mountains and things like that. So I, I think it's a, it's a very nice environment and it's be, much, much better controlled than the normal other events that we have. There is most definitely no sand under the camel thorn trees at Rista Winter. And there are no rocks here in the dunes of Atlantis. 
which meant that competitors could throw caution to the wind at task number five, brought to you by Market Toyota Tokai. Obstacle number five, they start here, they're on a time timer from a stopwatch, they go around the outer circle, comes back in through the inner circle, when they get to the point over there where the green and red flags is, they stop, they get given three balls, they have to throw the ball through the tyre. If they get a ball through the tyre, that's a bonus point. They then start to carry on through here and they timed off. It was a great opportunity to stretch the legs of each and every one's steed while trying to stay inside the well-marked course. Most drivers and their vehicles were fairly successful at this part of the obstacle, but the same couldn't really be said of their ball-throwing skills. The shotgun approach meant that every task was busy all day long with groups of between 10 and 15 off-roaders and their occupants coming to visit every hour or so. One such a group was trying their luck at task 6, sponsored by 4x4 Mega World. Yeah, this is a time to event. You've got one minute to do the trail. Um, you lose points if you are quicker or slower than one minute. And the special task is to blow up balloons and uh, not them. And uh, yeah, the most balloons so far was four for a, for a vehicle. This time the trick was to complete the tight and twisty course in exactly one minute, with points deducted for every second too late or too early. <laughs> Behind the wheels of Hiluxes, Pacheros, Jeeps, Land Rovers and Rangers, it was time to tackle the last few remaining tasks and obstacles at the 2018 Toyota Atlantis 4x4 Fun Day. Like all the other tasks, these two were also held on, well, you guessed it, more sand, and thus the basic principles remained the same. Obstacles 7 and 8, sponsored on the day by Barlow World Coles River, Cooper tyres and Ironman 4x4 with two more great examples. Obstacle 7, okay, you've got to follow the route um, around the copy and you've got to stop on the top between the four banners, answer three trivia questions within 30 seconds, stop before the exit, that's it. Brother, this is obstacle number 8, it is a time trial through the course. At the first gate where they get to stop, the co-driver has to get out, pick up a sticks and push a wheel through a track, a car tyre. While he's doing that, the driver has to eat two Mardi biscuits, swallow it and then whistle immediately. The action was now really heating up, as a simple right or wrong answer could mean the difference between victory and defeat. Or worse even, the inability to utter a whistle with the dry mouth after eating two Mardi biscuits with the clock ticking over. At one point, we overheard a competitor saying that the only whistle he heard was that of the car's turbocharger. Atlantis 4x4 Fun Day action and fun continues after this break. Welcome back to the now legendary Atlantis 4x4 Fun Day here in the beautiful dunes of the conservation area with the same name, just a short drive north of Cape Town. More than a hundred vehicles and their occupants have nearly made their way through the dune course and its eight obstacles or tasks. 
included in the 100 vehicles or teams, were a contingent of guests especially invited for the occasion by host Toyota. The list of guests included the Ristavinter organizing team, as already mentioned, as well as the pairing who won the prize as the highest placed Toyota crew at this year's Ristavinter Jamboree. But it also included a selection of automotive media from a variety of publications and radio stations. Some of them have made the trip to Atlantis before, while the 2018 version provided a first glimpse of the famous dunes for others. So what were their thoughts on the event as a whole? Yeah, I think it's about my fourth one. It's always a great event, uh, and lots of fun, but uh, Cape Town's uh, a bit hot today. But you know what, it's a family day, it's a fun day, kids love it. I've got a friend with me today, old Dion. Um, my wife, unfortunately, couldn't make it, so I think I'll probably do a bit better than last time. <laughs> Exceptionally well organized. So far, the control for me is very good. The way they lead teams from one obstacle to the next following a, a leader and that sort of thing. I mean, it's just fun. And, and just to see everybody, young kids, you know, older people, women, you know, everybody is just here doing the same thing, showing the same passion. They were clearly impressed by the event itself. But what about their respective wheels on the day? Toyota decided to keep them out with the latest and greatest versions of the stock standard 2.8 GD6 six-speed manual transmission Hilux buckies. And by that we do mean stock standard. Obviously the tires were deflated like everyone else's cars, but besides that they had to get by only with what Toyota deemed necessary for a new and luxury 4x4 double cab bucket. And it's just amazing what you can do with a stock standard car. And uh, you know the Hilux is also a very comfortable car for everyday use. So they sort of got the balance right. Once or twice um, the standard tyres have been the limitation where guys with sand tyres just take off and manage to get through. But there hasn't been an obstacle where I've had to have been recovered out of. So standard car, standard tyres can do what the other guys do. And I must say like the Bucky does look better. That's been like the main thing uh, so far today is people come up to me and said this bucket does look good now um, and they've been checking it out on the inside you know the navigation and the new dials and things like that and I just think it's, it's a good looking bucket and it's been it's been easy to drive so that's that's cool. With all of the hundred plus teams and cars safely through the course the shadows were starting to form over the dunes and contestants families and friends were all gathering to witness the conclusion of the day's proceedings. For many, it was simply about the fun and the joy of participating, while others took it much more seriously. But either way, the emphasis of the Atlantis 4x4 Fun Day remained on the word fun. And the prize giving was responsible for quite a lot of the fun, thanks to a variety of sponsors putting up a great selection of prizes, where most teams were richly rewarded for risking, well, life, machine and marriage over the past 10 or so hours. When the dust, or is it the sand, had finally settled, Charles Creer of the four-wheel drive club of South Africa's Western Cape Division could finally announce the winners. When all the scores were tallied, the overall victory went to none other than JC Scott Jr. and his navvy Jordan Birkes, who were quite happy to claim the title as champions of the 2018 Toyota Atlantis 4x4 Fun Day. It's awesome to be here today. Um, we must thank Toyota and the uh, All-Wheel all Drive Club. Um, it's very nice to be here, to be winning it. It was a, it's quite surprising. We're driving a diesel Land Rover. Sorry to say it, but it is fun. It was nice. And that was that for the 2018 edition of the Toyota Atlantis 4x4 Fun Day in the Dunes where a hundred families and friends enjoyed the pleasures of 4x4 and off-road driving, all courtesy of sponsors Toyota. We hope to see you all again in 2019. These highlights of the 2018 Toyota Atlantis 4x4 Fun Day was proudly brought to you by Toyota South Africa Motors.